Hi guys, Brian the Scare Lion back with another video. Unfortunately not joined by Tom today. Uh, he had to go and do something, so uh, we'll get to what's happening with the forfeits soon enough. But for now, here's what happened at WrestleMania 35. Now the show itself, for me, I actually feel like it was a really, really good show. If it doesn't come to the actual wrestling for how good it was, it comes down to those feel-good moments. And trust me, there was fucking plenty of them. So we'll start off now with the pre-show. Uh, the first match on the pre-show was Tony Nese versus Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. I felt really disheartened that this wasn't on the main card because... I don't feel like the Cruiserweights really get as much recognition as they should get because they're absolutely fucking incredible. They always put on an amazing match and for me this was no different. It was a really, really, really good match. There was some great spots in it like Buddy Murphy hitting Murphy's Law onto Tony Nese only for Tony Nese to reach the bottom rope and actually break the count. Fucking brilliant. But the match actually did end with Tony Nese hitting running Nice onto uh, Buddy Murphy and picking up the 1, 2, 3. A result that I don't think anyone really expected to happen. I think everyone was expecting Buddy Murphy to walk away with it. It was a nice little surprise to start off the pre-show. The next match that we'll move on to is the Women's Memorial Battle Royal. As far as the Battle Royal goes, it was actually okay. Like We got to see a lot of great spots in it. Ember Moon looked fucking fantastic. The big big gripe that I have with it is the fact that Lana was the one to eliminate Ember Moon. What the fuck? Just no, 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 no. You, you just can't do that shit to me. Moving on towards the end of the match, we saw Sarah Logan actually picking up the victory and I was like, yes, go on Sarah. You fucking done it. She eliminated uh, Asuka and everything felt fucking great. Until Carmella came back into it. Don't get me wrong. Having Carmella win isn't exactly a bad move, it's a pretty decent move because uh, it feels like Carmella's been kind of pushed down since losing the SmackDown Women's Championship, but I feel like the people in it, there was a lot more who deserved to win it, like Asuka after losing the SmackDown uh, Women's Championship, like any member of the Riot Squad really deserved to win it after all oh, the shit they've been put through with the main event storyline. It, it was a nice moment to see Carmella hugging her dad after winning it. I just feel like somebody else should have won it. Give Carmella some great spots during the match, but have somebody more deserving win it. The next match that we got was the Raw Tag Team Championship match between The Revival and The Edgeheads, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins, or as I've been calling them lately, Curtis Hawkins for some reason. In this, the back and forth was really good, I believe. Having uh, the Revival playing to the whole heel side, having them mocking Kurt Hawkins for a lot of the match, having them separating Zack Ryder and keeping him away from making that tag to Kurt Hawkins, it all felt really good. Zack Ryder looking like he's getting his ass kicked for Mesty yet. And Kurt Hawkins, Kurt Hawkins picking up the win and looking fantastic doing it. Do you know what? I'm not upset that I lost this one. Kurt Hawkins got his big WrestleMania win. I, 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 you just, you can't be upset after going on a fucking losing streak like that. To have your big win, have it happening at WrestleMania, and not just for a win, to have it happening for the fucking Tag Team Championships. Brilliant call, 100%. From there, we move on to the Men's Memorial Battle Royal. Again, it's a battle royal, there's too much going on in the ring for you to be able to focus things up. But there was quite a lot of great spots in it. And moving towards the end of the match, we got to see the whole funny little thing between Michael Shea, Colin, Go Colin Ghost, Colin Jost and uh, Braun Strowman with Colin pulling in his therapist and all that. And Braun like laying out the therapist. Uh, the best moment in it really was when Michael J actually jumped over the top rope trying to eliminate himself only for Braun to grab him and go you're not getting off that easy and then fucking smacking him. Aye, uh, right way to go having Braun win and putting a little funny, a little funny thing in. I wasn't too annoyed that they went with a funny side towards the end because we all saw it coming, didn't we? We all saw that Braun was going to win it and have the funny little thing. So now we move on to the main show, 
WrestleMania 35. Uh, we started out with Alexa Bliss talking about how she was going to get her WrestleMania moment, and all she had today was this. And then out comes Hulk Hogan. <sighs> Does anybody really want to see Hulk Hogan? Please be honest with me, did you really want to see Hulk Hogan? But moving on from that little moment, we got on to the first match on the card, and it was Seth Rollins versus Brocky Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. They cut a great promo going into it with fucking Paul Heyman coming in saying, if we're not in the main event, we're going to get this over and done with right now. Uh, I, I, it was a really good promo cut. And then Brock comes down to the ring. Seth comes out and fucking Brock just lays out Seth. Like, Disney even think about it. The match Disney get underway for a little while is just Brock fucking destroying Seth Rollins. I think that's the way we, we thought it would probably go. Just like Brock running all over Seth from the get go. I mean, it's pretty much rinse repeat at this point with Brock just annihilating from the start. It, this kind of starts to feel old, but I'm not upset with it because we got the right person walking away with the championship, which was Seth Rollins. And he did it in a brilliant way because on Raw he was saying that he was going to do it by any means necessary. And it would have been upsetting if it wasn't it by any means necessary and he just got the win. But he did go for that low blow. The low blow was what changed the game. So I having him hitting the low blow and then hitting fucking curb stomp after curb stomp after curb stomp. Fucking brilliant. And I the right person won. One million percent. After that we moved on to... It wasn't the worst match on the card, but it really, really wasn't the best. It was AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. For me, everything in this was a bit slow-paced and a bit clunky. Like, there was some great spots in it, don't get me wrong. Like, uh, when AJ Styles was going for the phenomenal forearm, saw that Randy Orton was about to turn it into an RKO and stopped himself on the top rope, pulling himself back down. Like, it was great for those little spots. But it was a bit too slow paced for me and a bit clunky at times. Mm. I mean, we had AJ Styles walking away with the victory, so fair enough, I guess. But I just didn't feel it in this match. I just really did not feel it in this match. Next, we got probably the spot of the night. The most amazing thing ever to happen at WrestleMania. Lacey Evans came out with her greatness. Ah, oh, the, the perfect moment. She came out, she twirled around on the ramp, and then she left. I mean, how much more excitement do you need? But from there, uh, we segued straight into the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. This was between The Usos, The Bar, Alistair Black and Ricochet, and Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura. The match itself, I felt like it, it was a really good tag team match. The best spot on the full fucking thing was Cesaro hitting the Cesaro swing while Sheamus was there just fucking hitting everybody with the fucking chest poundings on the, on the fucking uh, ring apron. Literally everybody was just kept jumping up and he's just there fucking bam, 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 bam. Brilliant. Like, it, it was a fucking great WrestleMania moment. But you know what, Thomas is really excited about this because the Usos actually did win and got their big WrestleMania moment. Thomas has been waiting for this for a while. He says that the, the Usos haven't had the WrestleMania moment yet and now they fucking get it. Uh, I, I, I agree. It's great to see the Usos picking up a victory and actually getting their big WrestleMania moment. So, nice way to go on that. For me, I would have went with Alistair Black and Ricochet. I feel like it hurts them. The fact that they've gone for the Raw Tag Team Championships, the NXT cha Tag Team Championships and the SmackDown Tag Team Championships and lost them all in one week. I feel like it really does hurt them. The next match that we got was the Shane McMahon versus The Miz in a false count anywhere match. For me, it was a really, really good match. The only thing that I feel held it back a little was the fact that they didn't go as many places as I thought they would. I thought they would have left like the crowd and went into like concession stand and things like that. I think that drew back from it a little. But... The, the things that happened were fucking great. Uh, you had Mr. Miz getting involved in the match, squaring up to fucking Shane. And then Shane hitting some 
deadly fucking punches on Mr. Miz, and then Mr. Miz was dead. He was just led in the ring dead. Fucking hell, he, he murdered a man. He murdered a man with those lightning deadly punches. The big ending, the spot with the fucking superplex, through the big black fucking stage from way up high. It was a great spot. Uh, somebody please tell me if Miz is still breathing because he was not fucking moving after that. Jesus Christ, it looked fucking deadly. Uh, having Shane picking up the victory, I feel like, is the perfect way to go. You can push forward with him claiming to be the best in the world. Sorry, he actually is the best in the world. Um, but aye, you can push forward with that angle. And I have. it was just a nice fucking match. Uh, apart from the fact that it could have, they could have done more with it. They, they really could have done more with it. But... For what it was, it was great. Next we move on to the Women's Tag Team Championship match. This was the Iconics versus the Boston Hug Connection versus Tamina Snuka and, well, Tamina and Nia Jax and Beth Phoenix and Natalia. Like, uh, the match itself was pretty decent, like there was a lot of good action in it. Uh, the spot where Natalia hit the uh, sharpshooter on both Sasha and Bailey, that was a really good bit way. Fucking Bailey trying to stop Sasha from tapping. Uh, that was a really, really good bit. Um, but the best part of it all was the big fucking surprise twist that we didn't see coming. Most of us wanted it. Like, I've been saying it for ages. The Iconics, sh like, 100% should be champions because they are the one established fucking tag team. And the Iconics picked up the fucking victory. I, I swear to God, I nearly broke my throat for a fucking cheering. I, I just started screaming. I was like, yes, the Iconics have fucking won. Uh, I, I feel like it's the result we all wanted, but no one expected. I am so happy. So, so happy they went with that. They did it in the perfect way as well. With fucking Beth Phoenix uh, going to hit the glam slam through the top rope onto fucking Bailey. And then fucking, uh, who was it? Was it Peyton or Billy? I feel like it was Peyton, wasn't it? No, it was Billy. It was Billy that jumped up, got the fucking tag. Really sneaky fucking tactic. And it worked. I'm so happy that they did it. So, so happy. I know I've said that like a million fucking times. But do you know what? Thank you, WWE. You went the right way with this. Next, we move on to match of the night. This was Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. I don't think we expected any less. These two are putting on a fucking great show against each other. We got to see a lot of almost fucking wins, especially from Daniel hitting the fucking knee onto Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston's down one, two, and he fucking kicks out. Fucking brilliant moment. We got to see everything that happened between the New Day and Rowan. Like, Rowan taking out the, the New Day only for them to come back and take him out. And I... I, I really don't know what more I can say. This fucking match felt so, so beautiful. And going into it, because WWE were starting to give us what we wanted, I was like, oh shit, they're going to take this away from us. They're going to take the Kofi win away from us. And I was genuinely feeling upset. But no, they, we got the Kofi win. We got the fucking Kofi win. I am so fucking happy. The biggest spot that I want to talk about is the springboard. When Daniel Bryan was uh, out on the outside of the ring and fucking Kofi Kingston goes for this springboard dive onto Daniel Bryan and hits the table. Like, Daniel moves out of the way and fucking pushes Kofi into the table. Jesus, it looked deadly. It looked like fucking Kofi smacked his full face after the fucking announce table. It was a massive spot and it's one that I don't think I'll ever forget. But getting on towards the end of the match, we saw Daniel Bryan hitting those fucking stomps onto Kofi a little bit earlier. But then we get to see Kofi hitting those fucking stomps onto Bryan and the pure force he was fucking hitting him with looked, it looked like he was just about to fucking rip his head off. Uh, and then we see Kofi hitting a trouble in paradise and actually getting the one, two, three on Daniel Bryan. Fucking way to end it. An incredible match. Like, uh, it'll go down in the history books, this one match. Next, we move on to Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship. Now, everything that had been rumoured before with the whole uh, injury, 
I feel like Ray probably did go into this with an injury, considering that the match really didn't last too long. It lasted like a minute or so. Uh, I, I don't know exact timing. But I think they played it so well, even though they were having an, an incredibly short match, I feel like they played it really well with Rey Mysterio going into it with the full momentum, fucking taking it straight to Joe. But then uh, when he goes for the fucking dive... Joe getting him straight into the Coquina clutch. I feel like that was the right way to go. It makes Joe look fucking so destructive. While at the same time, like, allowing a quick win so that Ray doesn't aggravate his injury more. I, I feel like they went the right way on this. It wasn't a long match by any account, but... It was the right way to go. It, it was nice. It was nice. We wanted Joe to actually win because this title, it's meant fuck all. It's just been hot potato. Joe needs to hold on to it and go for a fucking full on destructive run with it. The next match that we got was Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Now, this match, it wasn't a bad match. Like, it, it was a pretty decent match, but it, was, it felt like it was a raw match, and maybe that was partly due. To the fact that we've we've just been seeing fucking incredible match after incredible match after incredible match. So, I feel like it's merit a fact that uh, the crowd just got too tired at this point. Roman Reigns walked away with a victory, which I think we all know that's the way it was going to go. Aye, not a bad match by any account, just we were all tired by this point. Now, Roman actually did win this by hitting a Superman punch and then setting up for the spear, hitting the spear and getting the 1, 2, 3. A little anticlimactic, yes, but it's hard to just have non-stop incredibly amazing matches because the crowd at some point are just going to get tired. By this point, the crowd needed a bit of a break. Speaking of a break, this is the point where we go at, we go at Elias and Elias and Elias yes they started out with the Elias band Elias on drums Elias on fucking uh, piano and Elias in the ring with the guitar and the fucking microphone a funny <laughs> funny little moment um, and do you know what the fans were fucking loving Elias because well it's Elias you always you always love Elias the guy's fucking brilliant you had him doing his thing like uh, Everybody, please hold your applause, silence your cell phones, and shut your mouths. The part that came next, like, I don't know what anybody else will think of it. I'm just going to give my opinion. John Cena coming out as the doctor of thugonomics. It was the pure nostalgia. Like, this is the John Cena I watched growing up. This is the John Cena that I fucking loved back in the day. And he came back and... It was a great moment, it, it, for me at least, being that little kid watching fucking wrestling, it just brought back all the fucking memories of watching wrestling with my cousins. We also, we, he did his whole little uh, rapping thing that he used to do back in the day, uh, and he did say that he was having a heel turn. I kind of hope that that's true. I hope this isn't just a one and done thing where we've seen him and now he's just gone. I hope it's an actual thing where he's coming back, Doctor of Thorgonomics, and he's coming back with a heel version. Like, full on. I love it. I want it to continue. Please let it happen, WWE. The next match that we moved on to was the Batista versus Triple H in a no holds barred match. And if Triple H loses, he has to hang up his in ring gear. I feel like it started out really well this match, gone for full brutality. I feel like that's the way it should have continued. A lot of great spots in this match, like uh, the spine buster onto the fucking uh, steps. Like, that was really good. I don't know, maybe it's just a case of, again, being too tired. Like, this, this is a seven and a half hour fucking show. But, do you know what, for a farewell match, it was a really good farewell match. Uh, I think it could have stood for a little bit more brutality. The brutality was fucking great, but I think it could have stood for a little bit more. On the same side, they're not exactly young men anymore, so maybe that brutality would have been a bit too much. Who knows? Um, but aye, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a good match. It, it was a really good match. It probably was better than I'm remembering, but aye, like I say, 
tired at this point. I mean, it was fucking early hours of the morning for me. We had Ric Flair getting involved in the match, giving Triple H a fucking sledgehammer, uh, and then winding up Batista. Aye, it was nice. We got to see some some sort of weird fucking Superman sledgehammer hit. <laughs> Uh, and he finishes it off by hitting a pedigree and getting the 1-2-3, securing his career to continue. Uh, it's the result I think we all expected, and it was it was a good match. It was a good match. Next, we got the Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin match, where, well, let's just get it out of the way. Corbin won, and nothing else happened. So now we move on to Finn Balor, well the demon Finn Balor, versus Bobby Lashley for the Intercontinental Championship. This match I feel like went on for longer than it should have done. Don't get me wrong, that spear from uh, Bobby Lashley was fucking incredible. And the same with the power bomb from uh, the demon. Uh, they were both incredible fucking moves. But I feel like this match should have literally just been demon in, fucking kick shit out of Bobby Lashley, wins it. It should have been like fucking 20 seconds. At least that's the way my mind was gone with it. And especially at this point of the night where the crowd's just fucking drained and just wants to get on to the main event and actually see, you know, what what we'll get on to. But I, everybody just wants to get on to the main event. Um, there, was some, there was some really good moments, but at this point, everybody just wants the main event. And... We just wanted a clean fucking quick win from Finn Balor. Unfortunately, it went on a bit longer than I feel it should have. But maybe other people have different opinions. Don't You don't have to take my opinion to fucking heart. Uh, it's just the way I feel like it should have went. And finally, we move on to the main event. This is the triple threat match for both women's championships, Raw and SmackDown. And it is Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. A lot of great spots in this match. That paper's pit uh, on a Becky Lynch on the outside of the ring into the fucking barricade. That was a really good shout. Uh, and fucking Ronda played that so well. Um, all women in this match were really, really playing well on, on selling each move, on actually executing each move. I felt like things were going really, really well in this match. Uh, we even got to see a table spot. We got to see a table spot with Charlotte trying to spear them through the table and then fucking... Spear both Ronda and Becky through the table and then them kind of putting fucking uh, Charlotte through it. Becky hitting her fucking face off of the table at the same time. I mean, like, everything felt like it was going really good. The disappointment was at the end. I don't think this was meant to happen. It doesn't look like it was meant to happen. Uh, it was a quick roll-up with Becky getting the one, two, three on fucking Ronda. It looks like there was supposed to be more from that. And it was an underwhelming finish, but Becky won. Becky won. That's all we really wanted. We wanted the big Becky win at WrestleMania. Her hard and not bay for the fucking championships. I mean, <clears throat> I unfortunately we got it in a bit of a confusing ending, a bit of an underwhelming confusing ending, but we still got it. That's the main point I want to take away for you all of this. We still got the big Becky win. And it does mean we actually got the three wins that we wanted for the big championships. We got Becky winning, we got Seth winning, and we got Kofi winning. I mean, if this wasn't the most feel-good WrestleMania of all time, I don't know what it is. Maybe the action was Disney make it one of the best WrestleManias of all time. But it definitely makes it one of the most feel-good fucking WrestleManias of all time. At least in my opinion. At least in my opinion. But there we go. There's the recap of everything that happened at WrestleMania 35. And like I say, in my opinion, it was a really good show, literally, just because it was so fucking good feeling. Like, I, I, I was cheering for quite a lot of it. It, it. it just went the way I think fans wanted it to go. Maybe one or two of the finishes. Eh, we definitely didn't want to see Corbin winning. But I... I don't think I can take anything bad away from it, like, apart from the one or two little moments that I spoke about. It was a feel-good WrestleMania. Now, as for the punishments gone ahead with this, like I say, Thomas isn't here at the moment, unfortunately. 
so what will be happening is with the makeup, he's going to be doing the makeup during the fucking uh, next predictions video, which will either be money in the bank or I think double and nothing actually happens before that. So it will probably be for double and nothing. Don't hold me to that. I'll have to go back and double check. When it comes to dyeing the hair, unfortunately Thomas isn't going to be on camera much, so we've had to tweak this one a little. Tom loves his hair. Tom absolutely loves his hair. So instead of dyeing it, we're actually just going to shave it all off. <laughs> he's going to fucking hate it. Thomas loves his hair, and to have it all shaved off, he's going to fucking hate it. He's going to despise it. So aye, that'll be a funny little one. When it comes to the mousetrap punishment, again, uh, it's Thomas or lost. So it'll be Thomas going ahead with that. Uh, it'll probably be on Friday. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's coming here on Friday to watch the wrestling. So on Friday we'll be cutting his hair and actually doing the mouse trap. <clears throat> so you get to see that, tune in for that. But I, like I say, I, I thoroughly enjoyed WrestleMania 35. Let me know what your guys actually thought of it. Did you think it was a bad show? Did you think it was a good show? Or did you think, like me, it was a really, really, really good good feeling show uh let me know all of that down in the comments below but i i hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you did like it don't forget to butt fuck that like button peace